Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, good morning or good afternoon already, I think, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Carlina Bores. I'm from the Port of Rotterdam Authority, and I work for the strategy department uh, from the Port of Rotterdam. So we are working on yeah, all kinds of strategic issues that we're facing towards to, to develop the port towards the future. And I already understood from uh, yeah, the, the speaker previous this, morning, uh, previous this morning that was asking, okay, could the port maybe be an enabler of the transition in the area? And I think if you look more closely to the port, um, we actually know that we are in a position and we are also willing and able to um, work on this transition together with all the st stakeholders in the region, our customers in the area. Um, already for a couple of years, our main strategy is, is focused at um, accelerating the energy transition in the area uh, to cre create a, a renewable uh, a port to, to, to adjust the port, but also work on the digitalization of the supply chains through the port. Uh, so that's very important for us. And um, as a port authority, our role is um, to enable the, the sustainable development of the port area, but also manage and operate the port. And also um, we um, ensure that there's a safe and smooth handling of the ships in the area. There's also a very important role. And next to that, yeah, we work on the sustainable development of a future proof port area. Um, so um, the aim of the port authority is so therefore also not only working on our uh, um, competitive position, but even more to creating social and economic value for the area to Rotterdam, but also for whole of uh, the Netherlands. So with this presentation, I will uh, show you a little bit more about the Port of Rotterdam, but also how we look into the future. You already saw a picture of our scenarios. We just published them two weeks ago and they're going around already. So that's very good to see that people looking at that because, yeah, we did uh, quite an extensive study on that. So how will the world develop and how will that impact uh, the port area? So uh, one of the reasons that uh, the Port of Rotterdam is, is, is a large port in the world, which we never had, would have been if the new waterway was not there. We, we have been the, uh, the, the largest port in the world for over 40 years and still are the largest port um, outside uh, the ports in, in, in uh, the southern, uh, Southeast Asia. We are still the largest port. Um, it's very important that you have all these connections. We have excellent connection to the hinterland. So we're not only the port in the Netherlands, but the port of Europe, because we have these road connections, rail connections, inland waterway connections, and also pipeline. And on the other hand, of course, our short sea and deep sea connections to make uh, global connections and intercontinental uh, trade possible. Um, so we reached over 500 million consumers, not only in the Netherlands, but to Germany and beyond. Uh, so that's very important. And if you look around you here, but also at your home, um, almost everything what you see here has gone through the port. So the, uh, we consume a lot as people. Um, so that, that's very important that we, we have this trade um, and this economic uh, impact on the area as well. Um, so we are the gateway to Europe and more especially the gateway to, to Northwestern Europe specifically. Um, now, you already have seen this picture also uh, a couple of times. Maybe we, we started uh, as a port in, this, yeah, in the city of Rotterdam. And uh, in, in, in decades, we have, in centuries, we have developed much, uh, yeah, even more to the sea. You see here also the new waterway on this picture. So it started, uh, the, the large expansion started in the 1954 with the Botlek area, 1958, the Europort area, uh, 1969, we have further uh, the first mass vlakte, and um, in 2013, the second mass vlakte came into operation. And um, we also, a couple of years ago, uh, we finished uh, additional dredging in the new waterway, but also in the Botlek area. So that's uh, vessels of um, also with a uh, drop of uh, to 15 meters can enter the Botlek area. And that we also see here that um, a very important of our competitive position is this uh, draft of the area, because we are the only port in Europe that can have this large 
dry bulk, liquid bulk, container vessels 24-7, uh, we can handle them, uh, these vessels in the port and um, vessels are getting bigger and bigger. Um, and that's also good because that provides us economies, economies of scale um, as larger vessels, they sail more sustainable, uh, more safe, more efficient. Um, so as a port, it's very important to us that we can facilitate that and that we can see, okay, how can we uh, provide our customers the best um, uh, to create these efficient supply chains through the port. Um, so the whole port area, we already know it's uh, 25 miles, 42 kilometers uh, towards the sea. We have a, a throughput of about uh, 469 million tons per year um, that contains of dry bulk, all, all types of liquid bulk, um, a general cargo, of course. We are an energy port, an energy hub. There is a lot of, uh, it's not only a port, we do not only handle ships, but we are also an industrial complex. So there are a lot of refineries and chemical plants inside the port. Um, that also um, implies that we have a lot of CO2 impact on the area and on, on the world. And um, that's also uh, because 13% um, of the energy uh, used in Europe is going through the port of Rotterdam. Um, so that has a huge impact of 23.4 megatons of CO2. And only 5% um, of this energy is used in this area. But still we have we make this impact. And that also implies that we as a port uh, can have um, can account for 35% of the uh, Dutch CO2 uh, reduction goals for 2030. So we have a huge role there to play and we also um, uh, see that uh, all this energy it's, it's, uh, uh, that's going to the port, almost 9,000 uh, petersjoule. And you can imagine that one household in the Netherlands only uses 15,000. Uh, one petersjoule is, is, can be used for 15,000 households in the Netherlands, and 9,000 is going to the port. So it's a huge um amount of energy um, a huge transition that we have to make but there are a lot of plans together with our customers to work on that um so if i go to the next slide you see that okay our main strategy is also focusing on this so um being uh, creating uh, economic and social value we already create um, had an indirect and direct uh, number of jobs uh, here in the region is is uh, 175,000 jobs we have 8.2 percent added value for the um, if um, of the dutch gdp is created by the port of rotterdam um, and we want also to create that towards the future so it is um, that's where we focus on, on the one hand, acceleration of um, sustainability inside the port, but also being a smart partner in these logistic chains. Um, and to do that, we need to have an entre entrepreneurial and impactful organization. Um, but that is on our strategy for the coming years. Um, but we as a port, we are a global port, so that's not that we are only looking um, at the coming years, but also want to look further ahead. So that's also why we have developed our uh, scenarios. We, uh, within the Port of Rotterdam, we are used to work with scenarios for decades uh, because they help us to stretch our thinking and also to, to make, uh, because we have to make a lot of crucial choices in these times of uncertainty and transition. Um, and um, scenarios help us to see yeah, to, to, to look from different, different perspectives to the world and to see how might that impact our port and how uh, can we react to that and how can we uh, strengthen our position to make this impact as a port uh, with our customers, with our stakeholders and also to strengthen the role uh, of, the, of the Port of Rotterdam towards the future. So that we see here. So on the one hand, yeah, the aim of, of creating scenarios towards 2050 is um, to look into the future, to, to, to get to know what might happen in the future. And on the other hand, also to um, use it for our strategic business. 
uh, decisions because we have to make a lot of uh, as a port we we work on the sustainable development of the port we invest a lot in infrastructure in in uh, for our clients in in the sustainable development of the area um, so therefore it's very important that we um, I can see okay what kind of bandwidth could the world uh, could the port develop towards the future and um, as we are a global port we do not have impact on everything there are a lot of external factors that have a, a huge impact on how uh, yeah the, the whole dutch area will develop and also for the port and how we will consume in the future we don't know that the consciousness of the people will change there will maybe a more um, attention to living environment, uh, geopolitical stability can be high or low. We all know the war in Ukraine has a huge impact on trade flows worldwide. Um, consumers, they, they might um, look for a better price or they might change to looking more for quality. Um, uh, we have also government policies, this impacts how uh, global supply chains behave. So what you see here is all the eight key drivers of our future scenarios. So that are the, 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 the eight items that have the largest impact, uh, but also the largest uncertainty on the development of the port towards the future. Uh, so these eight drivers, uh, they form the basis of our scenarios. And um, we, um, with these eight drivers as a basis, so part of them are more macroeconomic related, part of these drivers are more on a, um, have a more closer impact on, on regional uh, Europe, Europe as a region. Uh, we have created four different global scenarios, so that are narratives, storylines of how the world may develop towards 2050. Um, so we have these four scenarios, so um, we created a kind of scenario tree that we started with two uh, primary pathways that will develop towards four pathways towards the future. And uh, we see here, uh, so the first pathway is more uh, related to uh, global cooperation, a one and a half degrees target, um, broad prosperity, while the other two pathways more uh, uh, the, for the, towards the protective markets and wake up call are more related to resilience, defense, efficiency, financial prosperity. And then we see, now, because of time, I, I will not go into deep, uh, deep details, but connected deep green is when it accelerates, there will be a world which is working in cooperation towards reaching this one and a half degrees goals that will uh, create broad prosperity, global trade lanes, uh, economic broad, uh, economic growth, and regional well-being, there will be a tilt that that will be seen that not whole the, not the whole world can work together on these goals. So there will be a more focus on a, a regional uh, clusters of countries will more work regional towards um uh, an interest in well-being so that will create a whole different kind of world where the, the basic industry also will decline in the in the in rotterdam now protective markets is, is a uh, further extension of, of the primary pathway and wake-up call is a late but um a, a late but fast transition towards um sustainable energy and how you see that can impact our ports. Yeah, we already saw this picture. It, it creates a bandwidth of about 175 million tons towards 2050, where we can see that the four global scenarios will develop very differently. So it, it, it looks a little bit smooth, but the underlying characteristics of the development of containers, dry bulk, liquid bulk differs a lot. And uh, we developed this in cooperation with Oxford Economics. They use their global economic model to model the macro impacts of, of our global scenarios. And um, together with uh, Oxford Economics, we um, build a demand driven model. So we looked at the development of the demand in Europe, which is dependent on all kinds of macroeconomic factors. And this demand development in, um, in Europe also um, says something about the possibility of uh, trade flows to Rotterdam. So then you see here that the port of Rotterdam will change. Whatever may happen, our portfolio will change a lot. We, we used to be a fossil port at this moment. We have very few uh, renewable fuels at the moment. You see it on the left hand, a very balanced portfolio as well with containers, um, liquid bulk, dry bulk. But towards the future, you see here the four scenarios, it will change. For example, in Connected Deep Green, all fossil flows were, are, are gone. There are no 
no anymore, they are zero. But instead of that, we have a lot of renewable fuels going through the port, like hydrogen, ammonia, but also um, synthetic fuels. And um, there will be, uh, still there will be dry bulk and also containers, and there will be a growth in throughput. In regional well-being, it will be a, a whole different picture. That's a, it's a, we see here that, that the basic industry will decline, the energy intensive industry, because there will be trade barriers around the world. So it will not be accepted here to have all this industry or industry will choose itself to go somewhere else, like we see already with, for example, the energy prices here. Uh, that is uh, um, can harm the industry. Uh, but then we still see that there will be, because we, we still consume on a certain basis, we, we will have more uh, semi-finished product imports uh, in regional well-being. So for every scenario, we see that there is a different um, a view of the port, a different portfolio. And, but even in protective markets, when we see there will, there will be no CO2 neutrality before uh, 2100, even there, uh, the fossil fuels will decline uh, to about 30% uh, that, that we have now, because we are still focusing as a port, as, as a Dutch government, as, uh, as Europe, on, on these um, climate uh, reduction measures. So, and then... Um, and maybe I will skip this one because it shows, this one shows, okay, how will the port be changed? Because we are a lot of fossil related port, but the new, uh, the, the, the CO2 reduction, the, 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 um, the climate goals will, um, will have a lot of impact, a huge impact on the port with CO2 flows, with hydrogen flows, with new uh, pipelines. We will be a circular port uh, and this will have a huge impact. And we were able to model this everything and to quantify it, um, to, to, to uh, look at, okay, how will this substitution take place? How will this transformation of the port take place? Um, now, the last slide, you already have seen uh, this, but I, I wanted also to touch upon this a little bit because we are here for the, for the new waterway as well. Um, this is our, um, yeah, the safety and environment of the area is, is very important to us. And that's why we also work very closely with the, um, with the Delta program and with our customers to see, okay, how can we ensure that the port will be a safe port as well. And you can see that in the blue area, uh, uh, quite a large part of the port is outside the dike and outside the protection. Um, and uh, without the fence and some with, with uh, protection in, in the yellow area. Um, and still, uh, yeah, we are uh, creating together with our partners, we are working on uh, flood risk adaptation strategies. Um, and the ones we have, indeed, it's already mentioned before that in a couple of years, these will need to be uh, rearranged again. But until now, we see that until 2100, we are still that the strategy fits well what is needed to, to protect the port towards the future. But of course, it is looking much further away. Our scenarios go to 2050. This is already a lot further away. And we also have to look at that because the port is developing. There are going to be huge investments in, in renewable energy. So it is very important that we also keep looking at this longer term to see that we can develop the port um, with the environment uh, together. So I think I have to stop here. <laughs>